With only a few days left before Slammiversary, did TNA surprise everyone enough to make it interesting to actually pay for the pay-per-view? Yes. But I am very concerned that because they did this, and you know where we're going because you can see the title, that they're doing this because, well, of course, it was pre-taped well before the decision of Destination America possibly not keeping them. They kind of knew ahead of time they were in trouble. This is my feeling about it. But here's the beginning of this show. Tigra Uno versus Loki versus Guido. Or Grotto. I don't care what the guy's name is. The way he acted in the ring, I mean, he tried to kind of act like Dusty Rhodes. Let's be honest. That's what the attitude was to me personally. Dusty had that type of attitude. And on the live show, that's what he came off of. In my humble opinion. You guys tell me how you feel about it below. Was he effective? To a point, yes. But knowing that he was the most garbagey guy on British Boot Camp, he was one of the first people to leave because he didn't really care about doing the business. Didn't fill me with a lot of interest. But I believe the Slug Daddy said it best. What do these shows actually do? They spotlight people, but then the show's producers, which is TNA in this case, don't really push the people all the time. Finally, we get somewhere with Rockstar Spud, but it kind of was bittersweet. Because Rockstar Spud had a beautiful spot, but TNA really... I feel like they're just going to drop him now because he's finished doing what he did with, what he did with Angle. That's the truth. That's how I feel about it. When look at Greedo... I think he's a guy who may got a lot of Twitter followers and a lot of Facebook followers, but really doesn't have a lot there. And now TNA has now given him a possible spot on this show. I don't know if it's very good. Maybe he could become something later because sometimes people who are stupid, who want to be in a business, eventually when they get in there and they see what they're really up against, is either two things. One, they act like a stupid bitch and get fired. Or two, when they finally have to know what they need to do, sometimes they reevaluate themselves and say, oh shit, I really didn't know what the fuck I was getting into. I need to straighten my ass out. I'm going to do this right. I don't know which one it is with him. It counts if they show him more or if this is just a one-off. Another thing that could be a one-off, but could be way more. Velvet Sky versus Angelina Love. Now, a lot of people I know are not too fond of Velvet Sky. They don't really care about her. Other people love her. I mean, she's a good-looking woman. Bully Ray did make a good choice on picking her as his new woman. I'm just saying, she's very good-looking. But I'm looking at it from the standpoint of what are they going to do with Velvet Sky. The question is going to be, is the feud between her and Angelina Love over? Watching this feud... Watching this outcome, probably not. We may still deal with them together for a little while longer. But the question is going to be, is Velvet Sky going to maintain this new persona? I know a lot of people are going to say, well, I don't really care much about Velvet Sky. She's no different than she was before. She is a little different. I'm not saying it's very different, but it is different. She's not talking. And the girl talks. And she's always been known to be a decent talker. But she's not talking. She's dressing like a, basically a biker chick. The way her boyfriend is, she's doing the stunner right now. She's not doing what she did that's kind of a bite off of, well, the pedigree to a certain extent. It's not the pedigree, and I'm not saying it is. It's a, it was a bite off of the pedigree, a cheap one at that. But I'm looking at it from this perspective. If she maintains this persona, she doesn't talk much. If there's any talking, it's done on Twitter, it's done on Facebook, not on the screen. That will make her different, even though no one really likes so much. But that's if they break this feud off as soon as possible with her and Angelina Love. And I love me love, you know how I feel about Angelina Love, but they need to break off because the beautiful people has been done too many times, then feuding has been done too many times, let Angelina Love go off on her own. Let Velvet Sky, who's obviously a face, let her deal with the dollhouse. Another challenger for a Terrence Terrell, 
a wonderful, beautiful Marty Bell and a Jade. Let her deal with them. An entirely new somebody for the dollhouse to deal with that is an awesome Kong and Brooke. That's the way I see it. And what happened to Awesome Kong? What happened to a Brooke? I mean, they weren't on the show. I think we did get a... No, we didn't get a promo from a Terrence Terrell. What's going to happen on the show? Wait a minute, we did. You see how little it was, the little interest? Because I, I've forgotten it already. We need more from the dollhouse. We just do. Now, if I'm wrong about them not having a promo on this show, just tell me. Now, Eli versus the Sarge. This was a not... It, you know how I feel about this. Chris is just awkward in the ring with the prosthetic leg. I'm sorry, he just is. And he's still too green to give me something truly compelling. I mean, I don't hate Chris. If he wasn't so green... If he could talk better than he is, he's been working probably with, with Bully Ray and Devon for maybe two years, maybe three. But he really needed more time. He's still very green. And that's what's coming off on screen, just is. Working with Eli, what he did by taking his leg made it somewhat compelling. But as I said before, and I say it again, if Eli did not take his leg, this will not work. And look what happened. Eli and him had a... It was a, a choppy match. Eli did his best to make it work. Chris just is still too green. But the problem is this. Chris did not lose correctly. He got beaten by Eli, but Eli did not take his leg. If he had just ripped it off his leg again and had taken a prosthetic leg and walked off and raised it over his head and said, I won. You are nothing. That would continue making this feud mean something. It's barely anything beforehand, and now you don't take the freaking leg again. Well, not take the freaking leg again. You don't take the leg! And that's what's upsetting me. It's not that I'm getting upset because Chris lost. I'm not getting upset because he got his leg taken before. I'm getting upset because you're going to try and give me a reason for Chris to have a fight and a feud with Eli over his leg, and Eli does not take his leg. Again. And what do we get? We get the match over and they cut the commercial. This is where, they, this is where I know they made a horrible mistake. Now, if they had done it after the commercial, that would have made more sense. But they didn't do nothing, so now I don't care about the feud. Bram versus Vader. Oh. It was good to see Vader. Damn, that man's gotten really... He lost a lot of muscle mass. He's just one big balloon. That's what he was. And doing the Vader bomb was a bad move. What were you thinking, Vader? You look like you actually hurt yourself. I'm not against Vader. I always remember Vader. I always loved him. Whenever I saw him. But really, if he is still wrestling, which I don't think he is much, it would have been better if he didn't do the Vader bomb. But here's the thing. And that's if this is true. Matt Morgan is now going to challenge Bram at Slammiversary. Now, I'm hoping beyond hope Matt Morgan is back because we need someone there. We need new blood. Even if they have been there before, we need new blood. But here's my fear. They didn't know what the fuck to do with Matt Morgan when he was there. They literally... You got a freaking monster in a Matt Morgan. He's nearly seven foot tall. He's chiseled like a damn Greek god. Even though he's not one of the best talkers, he can still get his fucking point across. And TNA had no freaking idea what to do with him. And they released him. And he went to OVW for a while. I don't know where he was after OVW. I think he was there for quite a while and may still be there. That's if this is a one-timer. If this is a one-timer, I can understand they're trying to get Bram over. If he is back, they must destroy Bram to make sure Matt Morgan looks good. Now, I'm not happy to see Bram get buried. But we don't have a choice here. If Matt Morgan jobs the brand, what was the point, especially if he comes back? If he jobs the brand and he's not coming back, fine. But they better have one fucking good match. Or this is going to be pointless for Bram. I'm just being honest here. 
Now, the Wolves versus the Dirty Heels. The epic ones, I call them. I had a problem with this match of Full Metal Mayhem. Why match four? Why? I can understand it being match five. But you decide to use something that's meant to be a closer one match before it. And I believe they made a horrible mistake in this respect. How do you top what just happened? And I'm not saying it was an incredible match. It was a good match. But what now? What do they do now? Are you going to do an I quit match? That is the only thing else. Or last man standings match. Either an I quit match, which is kind of hard to do with tag team. That's how I feel about it. Then a last man standings match and a tag team, which makes it even harder. What do they do now? A regular straight match? It kind of drops from there. And I believe they made a horrible mistake that they did something that's meant to be a closer on the four out of the five. The best of five series did not need this at the fourth match. I think they just made a horrible mistake. Unless they're going to do something entirely different. They better do something different. Because they don't. This is stupid. But I did like the match. And I'm glad Dirty Heels won for for the fifth match, but it better be something good. It better be. Angle versus Matt Hardy. I've never seen them both in the same ring together. To be honest, I never have. Now, I know that the Hardys have done a match at least once or twice with Angle when he was with the one who would not be named. I'm sure he did one or two matches with them. But I never saw it. It could have been on a house show. But I've never seen either team of the Hardys versus Angle and the one who will not be named together. But seeing them both in the same ring was kind of strange. It doesn't mean it was bad. It was different. Matt Hardy's always been considered more of a Mick Carter. He has been. He's never really risen very high. He did have his match with his brother back in WWE. That was the first time he ever went for the World Heavyweight Championship, and that was a mid-card belt. So, Kurt Angle's here, and Matt Hardy's here. This is a tag team specialist, and this is an all-around specialist. He's done tag teams, he's done singles. So, it was a different dynamic than what I'm used to. It wasn't a bad match. It actually was pretty good. I wouldn't mind seeing them do it again. But then, here's the problem. It wasn't the fact that Jeff, Matt, I was about to say Jeff, Matt Hardy jobs. And oh, Matt, I'm very happy you had a kid. Congratulations. So this was actually a nice spot for him. He's going to get some extra pay because he dealt with the World Heavyweight Championship. And champion, he's going to get some extra money for that. I'm cool with it. But here's the problem. After the match was over, Tyrus and EC3 come out. Tyrus gets his ass handed to him. EC3's in the ring and what do we get? He basically taps out to the ankle lock now. Dumb. I don't believe that was the wisest thing to do. You already messed up when he dealt with Lashley last week. Because you had Tyrus doing so damn much to get Lashley to lose. Instead of just letting Lashley just lose clean, which he wouldn't be hurt by it. He would be alright by it. But you had him lose so dirty, it was stupid. Then you do this. I'm not happy about it. It's dumb. And I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to the final thing that I know you've been waiting for. King of the Mountain. The founder. Jeff Jarrett comes back to TNA. I have been wait. I saw that the Slug Daddy did a video on it. I have not seen it. I didn't want to get any type of bias or excitement from another YouTuber. That's how I usually do my videos. I used to see other people and then I kind of took a guess on how the, how the YouTube community worked so I can come up with a good assumption and good feelings about things and do a good review. But I realized it upset me that I didn't really just come up with my own thoughts. So when it came to people like the Slag Daddy or Full Killer 99 I try not to watch them until after I do my video and I can see how everyone else is thinking. For me personally, this is how I feel. Seeing the Pope 
who looked like legitimately was surprised. I mean, of course, he probably already knew, but it made it feel something special that he's going, what? What? He felt like he really wanted people to understand when he ha since he's been working there, he hasn't seen Jeff in a while. So legitimately and honestly, he wanted people to understand how he probably did feel when he heard the possibility of him coming back for one match. Because Jeff has been done. But this is what I felt. Was it something special? Yes, it was. I never really did, a chance, did get a chance to see Jeff Jarrett. I didn't. During the time, be, the years that I sporadically watched wrestling, I saw him a couple of times using the guitar. But I never really did see him doing a lot of matches. And when I started looking at TNA, I did see him, but it was at the end of his career there. And they had basically played out everything that could be done. And the product was really bad then. So... I really wasn't that interested. He did a good few with Kurt Angle until it got tiring. Back in 2011, 2010. It was tiring then. But I'm saying it in disrespect. He's been gone for four years. No one has seen him since then. Yes, he has gone. To, he's done Global Force Wrestling. Not going to worry about that wrestling promotion. This is about how I felt about Jeff. And I felt that it actually was a good idea to bring him in. For the simple reason that TNA is in trouble. TNA right now is dealing with ROH on the same time slot, almost, in the same day. Now, we've all heard the rumors that TNA is about to get ousted and leave ROH there. And there's a good chance ROH will not stay either. So, this was done before that was even known. Or if it was known, I'm kind of surprised it would be. This is a... Well, actually... This isn't a pre-tape, my mistake. This is a live event. I think TNA did this because they want to convince Destination America to keep them. Because when the shares come in from the pay-per-view and the show, it'll show something bigger. This is how I feel about it. They did this because they're in trouble. They don't have a very big base anymore. They basically are going to have a problem where they may not renew. And they want to drum up as much publicity for themselves if they stay or not. So having him come back was a wise thing. But my question is this. Will it be enough for them to be alright in September? When their contract is no longer valid when either they're going to be renewed or they're going to be let go. This is a hard thing to say. But I do believe this was the wisest thing to do. No one has seen Jeff in a long time. So this really perked up a lot of people's interest. So how about how did I feel about this show? It wasn't a great show. But Jeff did make this special. He is the one who found the company. And you guys tell me below. Did Karen Jarrett kind of sound like she was drunk? Or she was very emotional? It kind of came off to me at first like she was drunk, but she seemed to be actually quite upset. And she's not a very good actress as it is, but this did sound like she was upset. So this did kind of feel very special. So it wasn't a great show, but Jeff did save it for me. I hope you enjoyed this. Zane's view, please give me a comment below. Watch out for my Bray Wyatt debate of the week. It's a little late. I just got myself a new computer and I have to set it up because the new one I had was not working that well either. But you get my point. I got a lot of stuff to do, but I will keep doing my videos. Just watch out for the next debate of the week. Have a good day and have a good night. Peace out!